We didn't realize we were going to be dealers. We just collected things, uh, things that we like to do. First of all, we love the history behind them. We, a lot of times, get to go to their homes and see how they lived with the antiques. And we just, get a great feeling about them. The name of the business is Recollections, and we started, I would say, around 1995. However, we started collecting, oh, probably 35, 40 years ago with my love of jewelry. After a period of time, uh, maybe five or six years, we realized that we had way too much stuff in our home. Uh, so we thought maybe we would go into business. We realized that we couldn't keep collecting, so we started putting our items in a shop. It wound up just being glassware and silver and things that we just loved ourselves. And then we realized we couldn't just put things in that we loved ourselves, so we started looking for other items. I do a lot of tools. I do guy stuff. I know when I go uh, to shops and stuff, I'm always looking in the corners and boxes and trying to find stuff that guys might be interested in, tools, toys, things like that. I think Ybor City was the first place we opened in a shop. Ybor City is an old cigar factory town. And I guess we loved everything about it. And after a short time of doing that, we realized we needed more space. And each time we did it, we just stepped up. We'd have another space, we'd get another space. Before you knew it, uh, we were in it big time. When we set up, we have a lot of merchandise that we bring. We 
generally leave our house at like five o'clock in the morning. We try to get there by 6.30 and hopefully get a good parking spot because there's a lot of other dealers there. And we start setting up. Uh, we have a trailer that we tow behind our car. People, mainly dealers, come early. They're there while you're still unloading. Sometimes they'll want to be looking in your boxes when you're trying to set up. It takes a good hour and a half for us to, to set everything up. But we do have a good system because it takes us quite a while to set up because of the volume of merchandise that we bring. Everything that we, we bring, we ensure that we have it wrapped properly so it doesn't break, certainly. Um, and I think we're pretty organized. You know, if, if something has a top and a bottom, we want to keep it in the same box. I think we do well for, for the amount of merchandise that we bring. We do spend a lot of time at it. We have a garage in our backyard that we put up about six or seven years ago because we had so much stuff. Uh, we're constantly buying things. When we mark things, we usually discuss it between us. Uh, we'll have something sitting on the table. I'll be thinking of what I think it's worth. Carol will be thinking of what she's thinking it's worth. And usually we're pretty close. So we, we, we go with it that way. The knowledge we have, um, we've gotten from a lot of the books that we've collected. We probably have 50 books in our house We've had up to maybe 75, 100 at any one given time. Carol mostly is on the internet, on eBay. When we buy something, checking it out, there's pictures, there's, it gives you ideas on prices. Uh, you're constantly learning about items. I mean, we, we certainly don't know everything, um, but a lot of what we have learned is, is from eBay. It's just, there's so much information out there, it's, it's incredible. You know, it's incredible. But we are far from knowing a lot about the antiques. We get a lot of compliments on our merchandise, uh, how we're, our stuff is displayed, what we have. Most things that we have, we make sure when we buy them that they're in good condition. If it has anything on it that I don't want on it, um, I spend a lot of time cleaning it. If it's a piece of silver that's not jewelry, I spend a lot of time making it very, very clean, almost perfect. If it's glassware, I soak it, I dry it. Um, we make sure it's extremely clean. I mean, George is wonderful about helping me with cleaning everything. Even if I think it's, it looks pretty clean, I'd probably re-clean it. But everything we sell, and I tell the people, when they look at the glassware, if they say, is there anything wrong with it, I tell them, when it's out on that table, it's in perfect condition when we put it out. She's real good with ensuring that things are in tip-top shape before we pack them up. Uh, packing, I do most of that. I do most of the loading the trailer, unloading the trailer. Um, but it's a big effort. It, it takes a lot, of, a lot of help from both of us to, to be sure that everything is working properly because we want to get there on time. We don't want to be late. We just want to be sure that everything flows properly so that we can enjoy ourselves. I said, well, I would do a little better on the price. She said, would you do 15? For one? No, for both. Oh. I said, 15 for both? I said, no, I wouldn't do that. I said, I'll tell you what, I would do 18 for one. Two for one. Yeah. She said no? Yeah. Well, she looked and walked away. It takes a lot to run this business. 
let's say you mark it for $80, and then you have somebody come up and say, I will give you $35 for an item you've marked for $80. When you know what you've paid, you really don't know what to say to that person. That's the worst part. That's probably the only worst part. Most customers are wonderful, delightful. You do work with them on the price if you can, but I think they don't realize how much trouble it is and that you're not making a fortune on what you're selling. Well, I'm a little harsh <laughs> sometimes. Uh, Carol, Carol has a lot more patience than I do. The only thing I really, really, that really bothers me with, with customers is when they come in with an attitude. I would call it a cocky attitude, and that, that bothers me, and it kind of puts me on the, on the defense a little bit, and I kind of step back from it. But sometimes people uh, will be extremely cheap in, in offering, you know, a, a price for something that you might want to sell for $5 or $10, and they'll offer you $2 for it. Well, to me, that's an insult. My favorite part of selling is that we have customers over the years that come back to us over and over again. Some of them will be wearing a piece of jewelry that they bought three or four years ago, and they come back every single year. I think that's the most heartwarming. Uh, just meeting the people and seeing them again over and over. Uh, we have one lady that, that buys hat pins every single month. We make sure we buy hat pins for her everywhere we go. She always buys hat pins. I feel like you're part of the family. <laughs> well, this is the first place I stop. I know. <laughs> they know us by name. They come back all the time, and that's the joy of it. That's the most rewarding. I have a family member uh, that thinks what we have is junk, uh, but it's not. It's, it's, it's not junk. It's, it's antiques and it's things that people, certain people like to collect. I think the reason they buy antiques is because years ago things were made a lot better, uh, which is why antiques are still around. You know, why, why things are 100 years old and they're still functioning, they're still working. Uh, the things that you buy nowadays, they just don't last that long. I think people always will be looking for, for old stuff. People always collect. It's enjoyable. When we go on vacation, the first place we look for is where's the nearest antique store? kind of in your blood. Are we ready to rock and roll? <laughs> 